how to deploy your Spring Boot application in Amazon Managed Renetis service. And that is by Divine Odazie. So if you have any questions regarding this, while the section is going on, you can type it right in the chat and uh, we'll get to it once the tutorial is done with. We'll follow in this particular uh, session. Particular session. Will be first, you create this Spring Boots application, then you dockerize. Hello, everyone. My name is Divine Lazier. I'm a developer advocate and technical writer, and also an AWS community builder for containers. So, today you learn how to deploy your Spring Boots application in Amazon Managed Kubernetes Service, also known as EKS. The steps you follow in this uh, particular session. Will be first you create this spring boot application then you dockerize the spring boot application after dockerizing the spring boot application in order to like understand uh how kubernetes works before we move on to like to eks we'll deploy the, the spring dockerized image on locally on minikube which is a one node kubernetes cluster then in order to use the application on eks we'll push the dockerized image to amazon elastic container registry uh then next we'll create uh, a kubernetes cluster on eks and after that, we'll deploy the application from the uh, Elastic Container Registry to the Kubernetes cluster. And finally, we'll enable access to the application via an external IP address EKS will provide. Um, before to properly like follow through, you need to have Docker installed on your machine. An IDE for this, I'll be using the IntelliJ IDEA IDE. And you need to have some understanding of Kubernetes as we will not go in depth to some aspects of this um, of this session. Now you need to have Minikube installed on your machine. I'll cover how you can install Minikube uh, in this slide. Then you need to have an AWS account. Then also create a user with admin access on AWS IAM. AWS, you need to also need to have AWS CLI installed on your machine and QTTL in order to communicate with the Kubernetes cluster you create locally and also on Amazon EKS. So before we start, let's overview some of the major tools we'll use in this session. So first, we we'll use Spring Boot. Spring Boot is a Java-based uh, framework for building Spring Power applications, production-grade applications and services with absolutely meaningful force. And how you can do that is because Spring Boot has abstracted uh, so much configuration that ideally you do with Spring. And also the opinionated approach makes you do stuff in a specific way and it gives you production ready uh features like metrics health checks external configuration and has an embedded tomcat server and abstracts the need for xml configuration that normally you do in spring with spring boots uh, flexible packaging options packaging into jar files WAR files packaging an application into a container image uh, you can deploy your application on several basically anywhere right you can deploy on cloud platforms web machines blue machines and uh, in this uh, session, as the title says, we we'll deploy, we we'll package into a container image and deploy on AWS uh, ECR, then AWS EKS, Amazon Managed Kubernetes Service. Uh, the next Minikube, uh, basically in a production cluster, there will be multiple worker, master and worker nodes, right, across several uh, physical and virtual machines. And doing that require a lot of signal, uh, a lot of system resources, CPU resources, storage resources, which is not possible when uh, working with Kubernetes on your local machine. So Minikube abstracts all that and gives you all the master and node processes on one single cluster. So that's why I say earlier, a one node Kubernetes cluster on your machine, on your Mac OS, your Linux and your Windows machine. And focuses on helping application developers and new Kubernetes users, application developers to try out stuff locally before going to production and also onboarding new users and to Try out Kubernetes initially. So you can get Minikube um, from the docs if you don't have it on your machine already. Uh, basically, you can just Google how to install Minikube and you'll be able to get the link that I put in this slide. And next, the Amazon Elastic Container Registry, just like Docker Hub, uh, GitHub Container Registry. Amazon ECRO is a fully managed, fully managed container registry that offers high performance hosting. So it offers all those features plus other features that Docker Hub and uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub container registry and other container registry don't like immutable tags, image tags. We'll see how to make an image tag immutable along the line in this session. 
uh, image scanning in order to see security for security vulnerabilities and some other stuff that we would love to see get on a high level overview in the image. And obviously it's integrated seamlessly with other AWS products and other AWS tools. So the main uh, stuff we'll do in this session will be on Amazon Managed Kubernetes Service, which is a managed Kubernetes service that abstracts all the effort required to create uh, a Kubernetes cluster. You need to install and maintain your own Kubernetes control plane and give you all the advantage of using AWS scalability, reliability, all the AWS infrastructure and its integrations as I talked about earlier. We are working with uh, EKS rather, first of all, provision a cluster, an EKS cluster, and EKS automatically deploys a Kubernetes master, and, or master rather, and we then we deploy worker, worker nodes, and in order to uh, communicate with the Kubernetes cluster on EKS, we will use kubectl, which we also use to co uh, communicate with the one node cluster, which will be created by Minikube. So we use kubectl, then we will deploy our applications on EKS. It's demo time. All the commands, codes, YAML configuration, and some AWS specific skip steps I will talk about along the line. You can find them uh, on this public repository on GitHub. In order to, let's say, uh, cross check in case you're having issues while working through this session. So let's get started with the demo. So you create uh, a Spring Boot application. So ideally, you create a Spring Boot application using the Spring Initializer, the stats.spring.io. Well, but for this uh, session, this tutorial, I'm going to create it with IntelliJ on the IntelliJ IDEA IDE. So click on New Project. Then we'll name the project KCD Africa. We've got Spring Boot. Spring Boot. The application is going to be based on Java version. Java 17 and next create the application. We'll select the dependency to use, which is Spring Well, because we're going to create uh, a RESTful API. Just wait for some time. Once everything is checked and application has been initialized. We then, then create a new Java class. So we're going to call it test controller. This will be a RESTful controller to test our application. So we're going to annotate it with the RESTful controller annotation. We're going to create just two endpoints. One will be the index endpoint. Then the other one will be just a name endpoint. So at get using the getter, the get mapping annotation. Then we'll return h1 the header h1 header hello world which is what most programming demos use and for the second endpoints do we get endpoints so no the spring method so we're just telling this to print out my name is the other way that so to run this application we can to build and run this application we can just click this start button on the IntelliJ IDA on IntelliJ IDA or on the terminal using maybe wrapper or this command mvn install and build the application then to run the application, uh, we can use this command. 
we run the jar file we need command this command gets the jar file from this jar file kcd spring with the snapshot of the jar file and yeah our spring boot application after there on port 8080 we can test that and check if it works look at us port 8080 yeah we get a low road then name then my name so our spring boot application works so next we'll dockerize this spring boot application and just terminate this control plus c let me use the terminal on my machine then to dockerize the application we first of all create a docker file so there are several the other ways you can dockerize the spring boot application you can use this uh you can use maybe a wrapper and use the build image um plugin to build the application to build and uh build the image but yeah we'll create a docker file so let's touch then you can use the vi editor or let's just write the docker file uh, IntelliJ. So from the application, as I said earlier, uses uh, OpenJDK 17. So from the base image, from where our, uh, the Spring Boot, the, our application image will be built, then copy. I'm going to copy targets. Then I'm going to copy the jar file into the container. So here I'm just copying the parts, the file name the file name then we're going to write the entry points so basically this is where our application starts after when it's run I see I'm writing the same command we use here we get the command this same command we use here I'm going to write it in the docker file to run the application And I suppose the thoughts 8080. When that is done, you can now build the image. So you can now go, can now build the image using Docker. Can now build the image. Using, okay, before that, let's just check that LS. I see the Docker file. You can also see the Docker file with PI editor. I edit it with the VR editor. Okay, run the base image and right. We'll be using the VR editor when creating the Kubernetes deployment and basically from here on we'll be using the VR editor. So quit and build the image, Docker build. Build. We'll tag the image, KCD spring Okay. In time the image will be built then we can check image you can see spring boot image then to test the image on we can run i'm going to tell look at the ports once our image will run and clicking from the ports the image us goes from the application then the image in kcd 
Okay, we can test that. The cost is 18. You can see that uh, Dockerized, the applica uh, Dockerized application is working. The Docker image works. Then you can kill that process. Next, we deploy this particular image onto Minikube. In order to mean use Minikube, we have to make sure Minikube is up and running. So basically, Minikube starts. I'm using Minikube on a Mac uh, M1, Apple Silicon. So I don't think you will get the same outputs on Linux and on Windows. So for us to deploy that particular image, right? ideally, we have to deploy the image onto a container registry. So maybe Docker Hub, as we see in this demo, we're going to be using uh, Amazon ECR. But for this, right, sort of before we go on to deploying to ECR and for us not to deploy to Docker Hub, we're going to create uh, a local registry, so a local repository where we will deploy our image. So we can do that easily on Docker, continue with the registry image. So basically the command will go like uh, Docker run, detach mode. Return to restart always. Or register to restart always. Name. Register the image. So as you know, as currently I don't have the registry to image locally, it's going to find the image and pull it. So you take a few seconds depending on the internet. So yes, I have the image. I can do Docker PS to check. It's currently running. You can see the issue image on port 5000. So we then next, right, we have to point the local registry to Minikube. So we pointing the local registry to Minikube. So when we deploy our application, it will be able to uh, it will be able to find the application. So we're going to use the this command. Now, after pointing Minikube to the local registry you created, uh, you then need to then to check if uh, to check if the point works. You will notice that now you're seeing all the images in Minikube are no longer images on this particular session. You're showing images in Minikube and not um, images on your normal Docker environment. So if you check here on the terminal of the Spring Boot application images. You see, different is not the same as this, right? So because of this, you need to rebuild the image. So you can do that with Docker, Docker build, target, KCD Spring Boot image T, and build the image. So I've already done that, like you can see here, above. So next, you need to tag this image that has been built. You need to tag this image that has been built to points to be able to push the image to the local reg registry, you need to tag it with the, okay, to explain this better. So when you want to push images to Docker, right? To, to Docker or brother, you, re you push images, you target the images, let's say this image, you target the CD, Spring Boot image, you target with your username. So this is my username of my Docker account. Then the repository you want to push the image to then it gets pushed with the latest tag or you give um, a different tag. So now, but for this local registry, using the tag, in order to, we'll have to tag the registry with local hosts, 5,000. So if you remember, our registry is talking is on port 5,000. So this is where the registry is, um, 5,000. Then the tag, of the registry so you remember i said for docker for docker hub is the username and the, the username of your docker account 
your Carob account, then the repository name. But for this, we'll give it the, we'll use the port name, localhost 5000, which is the port the registry is currently listening on, then the repository name, and which will give it the latest tag. So the repository name we'll use for this, we can use the same repository name. We'll see in, uh, when we are using Amazon eCRO, we'll see how we do that using, uh, when we tag, we we'll see, we'll see when we tag the image with a copy with the, repository uri so when we get to that you better understand what i'm saying so tag the image then the image has been tagged and you can view it with docker images then you can see then we can now push this particular image in the repository with the latest tag docker push docker push When I run Docker push with the image tag, I noticed that uh, it refused to connect. And this was because, if you notice, I explained, we, point, we pointed Minikube to the local registry. So it kind of deleted the image. This didn't happen before. So I had to recreate the image and it's currently running. So let's try to push it again. Okay, it's pushing now. Okay, now now the Spring, our Spring Boot application is on the local registry. Next, we need to create a deployment, a Kubernetes deployment. So to do that, we we'll create a deployment via the command uh, line, the terminal, without having to create uh, a YAML file. We'll use the dry run client flag, which will create the entire YAML manifest template. So let's see how to do that, kubectl. Deployments and give it a name KCD Africa demo. Then the image image will be localhost then the dry run flag flag. I run. Okay. And all and name the file deployments. That's YAML. So now we've created our deployment file. We also want to put uh, the service. In the same file so to do that echo write the yaml configuration to divide the file into two deployment then we create the service same way we created the deployment. Give it here. I'll drop copy the command. Change the name of the service. So KCT Africa. Demo. And we can also, we can check deployment file. Yeah, the service was created with target port 8080 and the deployment was created with the image of the image, the Docker image in our local registry. So now we can apply this deployment and to do that, skip CTL. Deployment. Deployment. Doesn't create it. Then we check the deployment was created so successfully. Cube CTO. Cube CTO. Get 
So yeah, it's currently running. So to check if the application, the application is currently running, it's actively running. Then you can get to see the port, QCTO. You can see the port, it's currently running. So in order to test and see this application, in order to connect to the application, that we do the Spring Book application we just deployed, we have to expose, as we expose the port 8080 with the service, we cannot access it externally on, let's say if we go to um, browser and then port 8080, we won't be able to access the application. In order to access the application, we have to create an SSH tunnel so creating an SSH tunnel using port forward. So to do that, kubectl, kubectl, port forward. SVC service, the name of our service is KCD Africa demo. Then the ports our service is currently listed listening to and the port you want to listen to on a uh, local machine then if you open the browser you're able to see the application has been successfully deployed on on kubernetes on minikube next we'll deploy the application we'll push the image that we created to amazon elastic container registry which will now use to deploy the application on Amazon EKS. Before you can push your container image to Amazon ECR, you need to make sure that you have AWS CLI installed on your terminal. So if you run, you write the command AWS CLI, if you don't get any response similar to this, then you have to like install AWS CLI. So we're not going to install in this uh, session because I already have it installed. Well, you can just Google and you will be able to get the information to install for a particular machine. So after that, I don't know if you, if you recall, I made mention of how creating an IAM user for this particular session with admin access. So instead of using your, the root user of your AWS account, so you should have also done that. Then next, you need, need to authenticate and configure your CLI. So in order to configure your CLI, you will do uh, AWS configure configure your CLI to the, your, the particular uh, local, the IAM account, user account. So AWS configure and you'll be prompted with some outputs to fill in your access key for that particular account and the secret access key, access key ID and secret access key. So I've already done that. In order to test that your configuration actually works for me, I will just AWS configure list. So I, was, I can see that I've already configured the access key, the secret key, and the region, US East 1. So after that, in order to push to Amazon ECR, I need to first of all create a repository. So just like the registry you created, right, when you're deploying to Minikube, just like Docker Hub, when you're deploying to Docker Hub, you create a, a repository under your account. So I need to create a repository on ECR. So to create a repository, I'll use this command. So I've copied and pasted the command. So to so explain the command, so yes, this is the AWS CLI and ECR and create repository and the flags repository name. So this I copied this command. So let me edit the repository name. So KCD Africa, KCD Africa. Got demo repository, demo repo. Then you remember when I talked about the relevant security, there are security features that AWS offers that some other container registry don't offer, like image tag immutability. So here yeah, we're telling um, ECR to make the image tag immutable. So when we create the image under our repository and when we push the image to the repository, that particular uh, version of the image, the tag, if it's latest, it will be unchangeable. That's what immutable means. If it's a test, whatever we name it as, we'll Get to see that and also image scanning configuration scan on push so this now tells ecr to scan like uh, i made mention of this about the security features of ecr to scan the image for any security vulnerabilities so click enter to create the repository you 
you should receive a JSON. Once you run the command, you should receive a JSON output of JSON objects like response of the repository ID, name, the repository URI, and it was created. So in order to check that this repository was actually created, we can just go to your AWS account, ECR account, so you log in. So I already have a demo repository, so I refresh. Once I refresh, I can see KCD, KCD Africa demo repository has been created, the repository URI. Then if you check in the repository, you see there's no image. So next, we're going to push our image to this particular repository. Before you can push the image to this particular repo to the repository, to, the, to this repository, first of all, need to log in to the repository. So we do that by, okay, first I'll copy the repository URI. Okay. Then we then get the temporal token and pass it uh, through the ECR API to so login. AWS ECR, get login password. So we'll get login password, so what gets, creates a temporary token. Region. Yes, it's one. And type Docker login. Can use with any other suite, use with any AWS. So, this command, standard password, standard in fields, this flag rather is what gets the, the value of the password that is generated by the ECR API, the login password, to the particular region where your repository is. Then we now add the repository URI that we copied. Yes, then you should get the login succeeded. Then you are successfully logged into the KCD demo repository, Africa, the KCD Africa demo repository. Then next, we need to tag this particular image, the image that we built. If you remember the image that we built, local images, KCD Spring Boot demo image, Spring Boot image. We need to tag the image with the username, right, the image name and tag. So to do that, just like we tagged before pushing to the local registry. So we'll first of all, the Docker tag, the repository name, the source tag, then the ECR URI. So we do that, that's all. Yeah, I can go copy it. So, this image gets pushed and it's given a tag of latest because we didn't specify it here so it, it gets tagged with tag of latest we'll see that so yeah after tagging if you talk about images go to the repository name kcd africa demo repository then we tag latest so now after tagging this repository next we need to push the after tagging the image we need to push the docker image to ecr so we've already logged in to uh, the repository ECR, the repository on ECR. Then to do that, our normal Docker push. Then we'll use the this to push the image the repository. So you can push with the latest tag. You can push using default latest tag. Preparing so it takes some time. depending on how fast your internet is. Mine is looking like it's pretty slow. So that really took some time. It's a good thing I'm recording this session. Yeah, so my image has been pushed, the demo repository. Get to the Africa demo repository so I can check. Now see the image, you can see all the details of the image. Next, you then work with EKS to deploy your application. So work with Amazon EKS, that is to deploy the image uh, we have currently have on Amazon ECR to a Kubernetes cluster on EKS. 
we need the Amazon EPL CLI tool. So I currently have the CLI tool installed. So we need to do that with the command EKS CTL version. So I can see the version of EKS. So in order for the version of EKS I have, in order for you to install that, you can just Google and to take you to the EKS documentation. So as we have gotten EKS now, uh, now we have EKS CLI, we will now need to deploy, create the cluster and then deploy, uh, create the deployment and the service on the cluster. So before that, when you've gotten the EKS CLI tool on your machine, uh, you can now get on to deploying the image on creating a Kubernetes cluster and deploying the image on the Kubernetes cluster. So before that, let's just overview creating Kubernetes clusters on EKS. So an Amazon EKS cluster consists of two primary components, the control plane and worker nodes registered with the control plane. So the worker machines, which are part of the Kubernetes cluster, are also called worker nodes. So this worker nodes, like I said earlier, if you remember the uh, slides, you deploy the worker nodes yourself as EKS provisions the uh, master nodes for you. EKS deploys the master nodes for you upon creation of the cluster. So um, next, before we can do that, there are some other considerations that are let's say peculiar, somewhat peculiar to Amazon uh, EKS. So what you need to consider when using Amazon EKS. So we have VP, virtual, virtual private cloud consideration, security group consideration. So to launch and uh, configure an EKS cluster, you need to specify subnets for VP, VPC subnets, virtual private cloud subnet required for the cluster to be hosted in. And now, right, you can create a private subnet, you can create a public subnet. In this particular session, we'll create a private subnet and um we'll create a, we'll use a private submit and yeah this is to maintain high availability and we are required to put at least two availability zones we we'll see how to do that also for security co uh, considerations when um the worker nodes are, are deployed right in order to configure like uh, eks automatically configures communication between the worker nodes and the con uh, control plane and constructed it in a way that com uh, communication are like for privileged ports Ports, right so in order to like access our application via an external api that will be generated when we deploy the application and also other uh, let's say other access let's say you want to implement accessing via load balancing and um, implement uh, dns and some other features you need to uh, add an additional inbound rule or outbound rule depending on the specification you want to create so for this particular session we're just going to when we are when we work on security group we're just going to create an inbound group for the particular ports for which we're listening to we'll be able to access our application um on the web so yeah let's get right to it to create a cluster so we'll create um a yaml file so we're going to use like i said earlier we're going to use the vi editor from here on so vi okay touch first to create the yaml file touch uh ek okay cluster with yaml then to edit cluster with yaml okay then i've already written the cluster configuration for my particular it's my particular subnet and to create the worker nodes so let me copy that and paste it here so don't worry i will explain this so so if you look from the beginning we see the api version the kind, which is cluster configuration, the name, metadata, then the VPC, the virtual private cloud subnet. So uh, I set it as private subnet. So these are subnets peculiar to my the IAM user I created earlier. The IAM user I created and I've been using throughout in this um, session. And this, I'm a, this node groups here, node groups here, Amazon uh, EKS has a feature called node groups, right? The managed node groups feature that automates the provisioning and the life cycle of, life cycle management of nodes which will be on which are EC2 instances for each Amazon, each uh, EKS Kubernetes cluster. So the node groups are being updated to, the nodes will be updated to the latest version of Kubernetes. Um, so like basically, you know, when we talked about, when I talked about uh, uh, EKS handling the deployment, maintenance and some other stuff you do normally with kind of like a self-managed Kubernetes cluster. So this now EKS man manages, node groups manages the nodes for you. So. Uh, now here we have worker nodes and they are of type three. Uh, their instance type is type three sumo. So to okay, before that, let's see how to get the submit. How to get the submit on your AWS account? So here on your AWS account, you can just search VPC, or you can search submit. So you can see submit top feature submit. 
you know, you'll be able to see Slope Submit ID that uh, Submit ID of a particular AWS account. And you see the sub IS ID have the availability soon. So I'm on EUS East one region. So EUS is one A, one A, one B, just like you can see in the configuration. So yeah, then that's that for the submit. So back to the node groups. So the node group of this are type T3 small. And this is basically because so I'm looking at the Amazon documentation, right? And this this particular instance is basically is an affordable option to run code repositories and test environments. So this is low cost, burst, stable uh, CPU performance instance, right? That's just for, okay, it's not something you use when you want to build uh, an application that uh, adds, that will receive, let's say, thousands or hundreds of thousands of like uh, real time users at a particular time. So this is just uh, a small instance for this specific demo. So yeah, that's that. And we have the another node group builders for building, uh, the containers, the images, and pulling and building the images. So we can then save this. Okay. So just to be clear that so proper that demo. Okay, that's good. Yeah, then to create the cluster, we use the EKS CTL. So which is the EKS command line tool, CTL, CTL create. Cluster, cluster, it's YAML. So it's currently creating using the background, creating a cluster in a particular region. So this will take some time. So this will take some time to create and uh, deploy the worker nodes. So I'll see you when it's done. So that really took a while. So we can see that uh, the cluster has been created in. The KCD Africa cluster is located in the US one region and it's ready. And also on uh, the AWS console, EKS, you can see that the cluster is ready. So if you click on it, see nothing as there's no resource yet. Okay, not okay. There are resources here, the ID Kubernetes resources, and um, the nodes have been deployed. You can see them here. The nodes with the T3 instance, T3 small instance. Then also, right, so if you remember at this step, say when working with, let me make this bigger, when working with EKS, connect to EKS, right? So we'll, we'll skip that step because it, uh, EKS, EKS CLI tool has already done that for us. So when you look through here, you see saved cube config, cube config configuration as, so it has saved it in my cube configuration file. So, and all the resources have been created. So I don't need now, if I use kubectl and let's say run kubectl, kubectl get service, as you see, taking a while, I would see the cluster IP, right? So this is the Kubernetes cluster, the service, the default service in the Kubernetes cluster on EKS. So next, uh, you can also run uh, kubectl to get like a wider view of code. CTO, we get pods, or same spaces, same spaces, space, all wide. Okay, so you can see all the nodes and um, keep system and all the defaults running, all are currently running. So our cluster is fine. Then next, we need to create uh, the deployment. That's why cluster has been created. It's time for us to create the deployment to deploy our image. So as we did for the uh, cluster YAML file, I'll create a new file, EKS deployments. I don't know why I'm always making this spelling of touch. So um, EKS, touch EKS deployments dot YAML. Okay, then open the file in VS editor, EKS deployments. Okay, then, so I've already written down the configuration, the YAML configuration. So I'll just copy it and explain. So yeah, the of kind deployments, of kind deployment, the API version. So the name KCD Africa demo deployments. Okay. KCD Africa demo deployment. Um, it creates two replica sets, right? Two replicas. So when we uh, create this deployment, when we apply this deployment, we create two pods and the name and the container 
uh, this is the name of the container. And if you see here, I left a placeholder for image uh, URI. So you get the URI of this specific image you deployed on uh, the, the the specific image tag you deployed on uh, EKS. So if you have like if you deployed mm, newer versions of your image, right, you can change the image stuff. So let's get the ECR image URI. So click on this. So we have the yeah, you can see the image. You can see here copy image URI. So image URI has been copied. You come. So I'm using the VI editor here because it's I've been using the VI editor mostly because what you use as a DevOps engineer, but you can use nano to create an editor file. You can also use the text editor, depends on what you like. So yeah, so this is the uh, URI. So this is a demo, the demo uh, repository on the ECRO, the demo repository we created, and this is the image tag. So you can get the latest image, this particular image. I need to build the to create the deployment and just with this image. Then I think it has the that. Then you up save this file. Okay. Then okay to make sure that it was saved, EKS deployment. YAML. So you can see. And also I forgot to mention the port is listening to. So the container port is listening. Remember when we created the container VS Code port 8080. Um so it will be listening to this on port 8080. So yeah, when the image is running, you see an running image in the container. So yeah, then you need to apply this um deployment. So click CTO, CTO, apply. Okay, deployment. Deployment. The name of the file. Okay. Okay. So the name of the Okay. The deployment has been created successfully. And we can check with kubectl get deployment. Deployment. Yeah. So the deployment has been created. Two. You no, know, I mean, mention of the replica. So two pods have been created and they're currently running. Then next, we need to expose our deployment to other members. Right, on a member in the cluster with the load port service. So, to create the service, do it with CTL. Okay, we press create the file. Okay, touch. We can use this and touch again. Touch EKS service. Dot YAML. Yes. Then VI editor to edit. Okay, service. Okay. Then, like other. Files we created already have the configuration, demo configuration. So, so all kind of service, the name, uh, the type, the service is the most type service in order to communicate for all the uh, nodes to communicate. And we define the port, the node ports, and for external traffic. So, we're opening this specific port for external traffic, and the port is. 31479. So, when we get to accessing the API via, like we can see in the step, the steps, accessing the application via an external API address, we'll see how we go take the security group in consideration. So, the security group feature of EKS in consideration to then create an inbound rule, rule you know, to allow traffic. So, yeah, then in listening, this is the part of the service, customer pass up to this port, then target port where the container is actually running. So, yeah, then we need to. Let me save this. Okay. I need to be sure that it's also written. Okay. So this. Okay. Yeah, then we apply. Cube CTO. Cube CTO. Apply. F E K S. Service. Dot YAML. Yeah. Yeah, service dot YAML. Then, yeah, the service has been created. Then let's hope that everything works fine. And let's get wide view of the code. You can keep it here. Get pods all wide. So the pods are running. Then get nodes. So currently all the nodes are ready and now 
we can talk, we can, now we can external, we can access our application via one of these IP addresses, these external IP addresses. So to do that, can note the IP address down. So to do that, we need to create uh, a rule, an inbound rule in the security group. Let's create an inbound rule in the security group. So let's set security. Security group. So here we're looking for this security group that is specific. Oh, we already have it here. So I've already created uh, the security group. So you need to look for the security group that um, enables communication between control plane and worker nodes in group NG1 workers. So when you create that, then when you find that particular security group, you go and you create an inbound rule. So I've already created an inbound rule that is listening to the port 31, uh, the node port 31479 for external traffic. So it's just to show how to create an inbound rule. Yes, yeah, so this is the inbound rule. So there's no need to say that I've already created that. So now you can actually access your application from anywhere, from any browser with the IP address. So about that, the IP address, so you can access the application. Let's copy this IP address and the port, port 31479. Added as a Google search, but three one four seven nine. Oh, sorry, I wrote three one five <laughs> three one four seven nine. Yeah, there, hello world. Then to test the name endpoints, my name is Divine Odazi. So you follow me and walk through creating a Spring Boot application, localizing the Spring Boot application, deploying the application locally in the one node cluster, Minikube. Also, we pushed the dockerized image of the application to Amazon Elastic Container Registry, created the Kubernetes cluster on EKS, and deployed the application on the Kubernetes cluster. And finally, using the EKS feature, we were able to access the application with uh, an external IP address. So that's that. Thank you for listening to this session and for following along. You can follow me on Twitter. This is my ads, Twitter, Divine Odazi, uh, underscore Odazi, and Divine Odazi is also my name on LinkedIn. I hope you enjoyed this session. And this is, this all this was recorded, I don't know if you noticed. So I'll be live in case you have any question and I'll be live to answer all your questions regarding this particular session. Thank you and I hope now you you know how to deploy your Spring Boot application in Amazon Managed Kubernetes service. Yeah, do enjoy the rest of the KCD Africa 2022. Wow, that was a great um, demo from Divine. And if we're looking through the chat, Divine was right there to answer most of the questions, but that was a really informative one right there. Awesome. Um, let's, okay, while we wait for, Let's wait for Divine to join the backstage back. I think he was uh, in the backstage before he dropped off. So he could answer uh, some other questions. Live. Okay, so let's, we still have some time uh, within uh, Divine's uh, slot. So let's, Give him a few minutes while he joins. Oh, I think he's here. Uh, so let's put him on. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Welcome. Sure. Yeah, no, no worries. Internet happens to everyone. It's like, yeah. if it doesn't happen, we have to do a special sacrifice to the gods for maintaining the <laughs> internet. Demo gods, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, welcome. Ah. Yeah. So should I do I need to introduce myself? Yeah, if you can give us more introductions or any or any more context around the talk <laughs> that you might not have uh, you might have remembered after after the yeah, yeah, yeah. Of your conversations yeah. with people in chat. Okay, so like something I figured out right or noticed right that was good to know. So regarding uh, the M1 chipset, so initially when I built the Docker image. And it was on the ARM64 architecture. Uh, when I pushed 
the image to ECRO when uh, after creating the, applying the deployment, like I I st was stuck for like five hours trying to resolve because the image was not like building, it was not running. So like I noticed that like I then remembered, wow, I'm using uh, the M1 chipset and my nodes are based on AMD 64. So I had to like uh, set up a VM with uh, Colima, which is a container runtime for Lima Linux on Mac OS. And then after I did that, I had to then build the image on the VM to be on AMD64 before pushing it to ECR. And then, so like it was just, the M1 chip has just been like making my life a lot harder as doing DevOps stuff. So yeah, I think that's what I did. I kind of covered it, but I had to like remove it in order to make the, uh, the talk a little bit, to meet the time slots, yeah. Awesome. Okay, I think we have a couple of questions here, uh, Anita. I can't find them. Uh, can you? Yeah, I, isn't that the question um, Divine answered earlier? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think uh, there are some others. Let me, okay, I found them. Um, mm. Yeah, Divine, um, can you explain more about the local repository you created? Okay, sorry, I was on mute. Okay, so the local repository I created is just like, it's not something you do in a production environment, right? It's just for testing purpose. So it's just, instead of like the demo, I had to focus on ECR Amazon, instead of pushing to um, Docker Hub, so in order to just make things faster, I use the repository registry image, the registry uh, image, the an image on uh, Docker Hub, and I use the image to create a local a repository for that particular session. So I need and um, and pushed the my Docker image into the repository in order to use it on Minikube. So yeah. That's awesome. Um, okay, we have a question in the chat here. It says, why do you use, okay, did you not use, okay, why did you not use Kubernetes? Okay, I think he asked the question and corrected it. Why did you not use Kubernetes? Yes. I'm kind of confused. I used Kubernetes. I created a Kubernetes cluster. So I don't know if I can see his question. Uh, okay, it's in the YouTube chat. Uh, Emmanuel uh, Swal Lali, sorry if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. If you can ask again or rephrase the question. Okay, um, I think we the other question we'll have is, uh, what of if I build this image on an AI, ARM architecture, will it run on the EKS cluster? Um, so depending on how you provision, you deploy your nodes, right? So I don't know, I kind of missed, talked about that a bit earlier when I joined the call. So you have to make sure that your node runs on the same architecture as your image. If not, it won't, uh, it won't be, it will deploy, right? But it won't run. You get like a crash loop backup status, which will lead to an error. It will just keep restarting, restarting. The pods will keep restarting starting all the crashes oh okay so you have to make sure your cluster is the same your nodes are the same architecture with your images oh okay awesome yeah i think that's all the questions we have um audience if you have any more questions divine is here before he leaves Okay, I think he's asking, why did you use um, Minikube? Okay, so I use Minikube, so kind of like, uh, I started from scratch, right? Building the application locally, the Spring Boot application. And I use Minikube just kind of to show and explain like, okay, some people may be watching the, for the first time they're using uh, Kubernetes, they don't have access to ECR like uh, to uh, AWS, so like just like 
try it out and test out initially. That's why I used uh, Minikube. Okay, okay, well, um, Emmanuel, I hope that answers your question. Although Emmanuel says he understands you now because of Lima. Okay, yeah, I think he's talking about the ARM uh, issue, the architecture issue. Great. So if you have any other questions for Divine, you can still drop it in the chat while he's here. Okay, I think we don't have any more questions. Thank you very much, uh, Divine. and. Uh, we look forward to seeing more of your contributions in the KCD ecosystem. Thank you. I look forward to contributing more. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Bye.